Good morning and welcome to Solid Ground. We are so glad that you are here. You know, I heard this little saying the other week, seeing a spider isn't a problem. It's when it disappears that it's a problem. I was in my daughter's room and I saw a spider and then when I went to get it, it disappeared. It wouldn't have been a problem except now I had no idea where it was and that really freaked me out. You see, what we see matters. What we're looking for or what we don't see. Well, in just a few minutes, Pastor Mike is gonna share an awesome message with us about what we see and what we don't see and what we should see. So stick around and enjoy the worship with us this morning. I believe that God has a special word for you. But before we do, let me just give you a couple updates of things that are happening around here. One is on Thursday, December 15th, our church is getting free tickets to partner with another church in Claremont for a living nativity. And if you'd love to be a part of that, we'd love to connect with you. Um, just check out our website for how you can be a part of that. It is a fun thing. We love to support what other churches are doing in our area. Well, there's a number of other things that are coming up in the holiday season and you won't wanna miss them. So check out our website at sgbic.com. And while you're there, send us a prayer request. This is more than just a place that we can enjoy a service. This is also a community. And so we'd like to know how we can pray with you and support you. And thank you for all the ways that you pray and support us. Your giving makes a difference. It makes all of this possible. We love your generosity and we love how that is being multiplied, not only here, but around the world. God is doing amazing things. And so thank you. So as we begin this morning, let's start with a word of prayer of just thanking God for all the ways that he has been blessing us, is blessing us, and the ways we look forward to seeing what he's going to do in the future. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for this time of worship and the chance to be together. God, I pray that you would use these moments for your honor and your glory and that you would touch our hearts this morning and that we would see your hand at work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah. 
Thank you. 
into glorious light. I love the story of Ruvian and Shimeon. Now, this isn't in the Bible, but it's made up by a rabbi. They are kind of playful with the, the Jewish text. And uh, he tells this story as a way of just uh, teaching a life lesson. And Ruvian and Shimeon uh, were two uh, lesser known Hebrews fleeing Egypt. And these guys were not having a good time. I mean, they're, they're leaving Egypt, they've got their stuff with them, they're walking and walking, and after, after a while they realize that Pharaoh is, is coming with a whole army to destroy them, and they are ticked. They're out in the wilderness, and all of a sudden, as they're following everybody, they're, they're walking on soggy ground and their sandals are getting wet. It smells like dead fish. There's wind all over the place, so their, their, their clothes are getting sprayed with wind and mud and their hair's getting all mess up, messed up and they're complaining. I can't believe we've had to walk so long. I can't believe it smells bad. I can't believe we're getting dirty. And oh, well now the ground's dry again. And now all the wind is still blowing all kinds of dry sand all over us. Look at us, we're caked with mud, now we're dusty, we smell bad, this thing is horrible. And they complained their entire way through the parting of the Red Sea. And I love this, I love this um, lesson in that, because it's so easy for us to do in life. And even though it's not in the Bible, it's a story that I, that I hold on to when, uh, when I'm going through life and I start to complain. There's a difference between acknowledging what's really going on and, and being honest about your situation. And then there's just straight up good old fashioned having a, a moaning, complaining fest. So if you're taking notes at home, uh, this is what I wanna talk about today. If you always want what you don't have, you'll never be thankful for what you do have. Gratitude is the secret weapon of spiritual growth. It's a discipline and it's essential for us to get through life with some measure of peace with, and to get through our problems. And I wanna tell you a, a story from Jesus's life and it, it takes place about one year into Jesus' ministry. And by this time, he'd healed hundreds of people, thousands of people. Jesus had raised the dead. Jesus was becoming a popular name. He was recognized in, in first century Palestine and, and he decides to go to a place that is very special to him, his hometown of Nazareth. And our text today comes from Matthew chapter 13. Uh, and we're gonna read verses 53 to 58 together. So, when Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching people in their synagogue and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom from and these miraculous powers, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't Mary the mother's name? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Now, I quote this to my family all the time when they're not respecting me. I am a prophet, I am a prophet. But Jesus has a point here. Because, uh, like we mentioned before, he's becoming popular. This should have been uh, a time when all these people that were following him, he had, a, he had a following by this point of people who wanted to see miracles and flashy stuff. They've been listening to his parables. And they're, all, they're, they're drawn to that. And they're also just drawn to who Jesus is. So one would expect coming to his hometown, his old stomping grounds, where he spent his childhood, where, where many people in the village would have known him. And they, would have, they, they should have been proud. This guy is some sort of teacher or rabbi. But instead, he shocked the town. We just read them saying, where did he get this wisdom and miraculous powers? They, they, they knew something was going on, but the dots weren't connecting. Um, this is Jesus here that, that we knew. It's the, the carpenter's son. Uh, 
it says that they, you know, their amazement, they, they didn't stay there. They became antagonist. The text says they took offense at him. They didn't just question Jesus. Oh, I've never heard the text interpreted that way. I've never heard these teachings. Like they flat out rejected him. And the irony, you know, this, this hometown hero, they didn't throw him a party. They didn't throw him a parade. There wasn't even cake. Like there's none of that. He's one of our own dynamic. Like in sports, when the hometown kid plays for the hometown team or, or when uh, the hometown kid becomes popular on uh, The Voice or one of the reality TV show competitions, no one rallied around Jesus. There wasn't, there wasn't even a lukewarm reception for Jesus. It was flat out rejection. How would you feel if that happened to you? you know, Jesus said he had no honor in his own hometown while he's surrounded by his friends and family. So here we have Jesus with instead of a hero's welcome, Jesus was dismissed at best. And the text says he was rejected by the people who most likely knew him. Like, oh, it's gotta be a, and it's tragic for me because here is God in the flesh right in front of their noses and they rejected him. The blessings, healing, um, someone who's able to explain how reality really is, how the world really works, and they rejected him. But I don't want to be too hard on these people because the placement of the story, it even says after he had finished teaching these parables, they weren't just good life lessons. It wasn't just the power of positive thinking and keep a stiff upper lip. Like These parables were threatening, like a sensible person would, would say, whoa, 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 I've got to chew on this for a minute because you're talking about something radically different than our historic Jewish faith. You're, you're, you're dropping some massive landmines in our path right now. And, and what you're teaching Jesus is dangerous. So it would be easy to say, how could they be so blind? They missed it just like Ruvian and Shimeon. We have to consider what Jesus actually is teaching. Uh, love your neighbor. Uh, blessed are you when, when you're poor. Blessed are you when, when you grief. Like these things are really hard to wrap our hands around. This happens to you and me often. Like in a taking it into a practical, a practical sense. Like we miss things that are in front of our faces all the time. Uh, when my family was preparing to move to Solid Ground Church, there was a period of two weeks where I couldn't find one of those fancy key fobs for the car. It's not a key that you plug in. The car ran on proximity to the key fob to the ignition, and I couldn't find it. And my wife Marie was making fun of me like crazy because I lose my wallet. I lose, I don't say they're lost, they're just temporarily misplaced. The universe will bring it back to me. I couldn't find it, but the, the statute of limitations had passed on saying, oh, it's not lost, it's just misplaced. It had been weeks. This key fob was lost. I didn't, I'd given up hope, and these things are expensive to replace. But one day, as I was walking out of the garage, borrowing Marie's key fob once again, having that walk of shame, can I borrow the car key? I passed by the pantry door. And I know that at this time, my son was one and he's barely walking around, but he loved those key fobs and I had been blaming my one-year-old for misplacing it. And there was, there was a little hole in our hollowed out door and it was just at the right height for Levi to put it in. It was just big and barely big enough because a toy had crashed in to the, to the door, uh, also my son. And I took the door off of, his hin off of its hinges and I rattled it a little bit and it sure sounded like a key fob. It looked like a key fob in there and it took me a couple hours to, to get it just right and out pops this little key fob. Now, I, can't bl I can at least blame this one on my kids, but I was passing by the solution to my problem. I was passing by the, the thing that would bring me so much uh, peace in my life. It was, I passed it at least a hundred times looking for this stupid key fob. 
Now, and, and I've lost stuff in all kinds of fantastic places and a pair of pants that I hadn't worn for weeks. I've, I've even lost my keys at the refrigerator at my friend's house. Like I'm talented at this. It's shockingly easy to miss something that's right in front of our face. We get distracted, we get tunnel vision, or we just refuse to look. And the next thing you know, we're completely oblivious to the obvious. One of my favorite authors, Dallas Willard, says, the familiar can become unfamiliar to us. We get so familiar with it that we don't even know it anymore. And this dynamic is at play with Jesus and his hometown. Like, and this dynamic is at play with the blessings that are right under our noses. We have access through the Holy Spirit to the presence of Jesus. Jesus has provided so many blessings in our life, but we can easily pass them. We can even easily forget the things that we value, the things that we, that, we, that we hold dear because they can become familiar to us. Our family, as some of you with young children or teenagers, you, you miss the blessing. You and I, both, I'm in this stage of life too because you're taking kids to practice, you're, you're in the grind, you're in the trenches. And here we have all these opportunities to enjoy what God has given us, but we're thinking about the to-do list. We're thinking about what's for dinner. We're, our mind's still at work. Um, there's, I was thinking even just, just having the Bible, this text, like historically, before the printing press, these would have cost at least a year's wages for a well-to-do person to have. Some churches didn't even have their own Bible. But now we can, we can get one on Amazon. You can get it really cheap if it doesn't have the fancy binder. You can download one for free on our phones. We have all these blessings right under our noses. When I was a kid, I hated going to school. Don't want to go to school. What's your favorite class, Mike? Lunch. <laughs> like, but what a blessing to have access to education. What a blessing to have access to all these resources or jobs. It's so easy to complain about work and the people, because there's people there. <laughs> the people you work with, the people you serve. But what a blessing it is to be an embedded missionary somewhere. What a blessing it is to be able to, to provide resources. I've never appreciated work as much as I did when I was out of it. So gratitude will change your whole attitude. Don't be blind. And maybe there's a blessing in your life. Maybe there's something in your life that, that you're missing right now. And today's a wake-up call. Um, today's a wake-up call also to not be one of those sensible people that, that read and, and come in contact with the, the person of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus and say, oh, that's naive. That's not how the world works. Love your enemies. Be generous. What? No, 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 no. We live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. No, that, it's, that's so nice of you to say, Jesus, but I've got real life to live. This stuff is true. It matters. This is how God's really set up the world, no matter how everyone else is doing it. Take a, I want to challenge you to take a good, hard look around you, especially if you're going through a tough time. You're going to need to find those things to hold on to is an anchor. But take a good hard look around you. Maybe a few blessings at first glance. Probably a lot of hard things, a lot of stressful things at first glance. And then take a look around you through the eyes of Jesus, through his teachings. Have you been rejected? Jesus said you're in really good company. Are you poor in spirit? Well, Jesus says you, you're going to inherit the earth. Jesus is with you. Are, do you. Do you feel broken? That's an opportunity to experience Jesus closer to you than ever. I always feel like you're last in line. Jesus said the last shall be first and the first shall be last. It's, it's a lifelong journey of looking at our circumstances, looking at how the world is working through the eyes of Jesus. Speaking of Jesus, I love that his brothers and his sisters and his mom and, and Joseph, they were mentioned in this text. And we know from other places that initially they rejected Jesus. There's other places in scriptures that record his family coming up to him saying, uh, Jesus, can you just cool it a little bit? 
Jesus, we need you to cool it with all this I am the temple stuff. And we need you to cool it with this Messiah stuff. It's, it's getting out of hand. And later on, there's, there's a whole book in the Bible named after Jesus' brother, James, leader in the early church. What would it take for you to convince your brothers and sisters and your mom and dad that you were God in human flesh? For me, it would take a whole lot, like me coming back to life from the grave. Maybe that's what happened. And it's recorded James was one of the early leaders in the church in Jerusalem. Like, this stuff is real. Don't, let's not be like the people in Jesus' town who missed the opportunities for, for enjoying the presence of Jesus. Let's not be like Ruvian and Shimeon who walked, they were literally walking through a miracle, and, but their eyes were in the wrong place. It's one of my favorite core life truths that I have that I hold on to is that you've got your problems in one hand and Jesus in the other. And whatever you make your focus, it overwhelms you. And when you hold Jesus up to your eyes, you, that becomes your focus. Your problems are still there, but they don't have to overwhelm you. This is a discipline of, gratitude isn't something that just magically happens. It is a very important process. It's not happy people who are thankful. It's thankful people that are happy. You know, when I studied uh, acting, I was a, a theater major in college for a couple years. And when we were trying to do a, a funny scene, uh, the director would often say, you gotta find the funny. I think they, they took it from a Hollywood person. And so I remember like looking through a script or going, working a scene over and over again and trying to find the funny. And sometimes when you're looking for it, ooh, there's another way to say this word. Or if I say one thing, but do another thing, a different thing with my, with my body language or my facial expressions, ah, that's where the funny is. Well, since I've stopped trying to pursue acting full time and coming through the texts, there's been so many times where I've approached my life and, and got alone with God and told myself, like, find the peace even in the midst of a storm. God, where's the comfort? Where's the joy? And um, I've talked about it before, but I have a gratitude journal. Uh, it's, a, it's a process I do every day. Uh, and it's a part of my prayer process. And I try to write new things because it's easy to say, I'm thankful for my wife, especially if she finds my journal, thankful for my kids. Those are all great. We are thankful for those things. But I try to put in something new every single day, a new item, uh, a new person, uh, a new place I'm thankful for that just, oh, it gives me life to be there. A uh, new activity that I'm thankful for. And I wanna challenge you to do that this week. Write down five things, start there, five things that you're thankful for. But I want to challenge you to take it a step further. If you, I want you to tell somebody what you're thankful for. And if it's a person you're thankful for, call them. Saying, hey, I was just praying. I was just prayerfully writing out things I was thankful for and you popped up on the list. Or you could text them or even better yet, tell them face to face. Imagine just saying, hey, can you grab a coffee with me? And sitting down and they say, what do you, what do you want to talk about? You say, well, I wanted to have coffee with you because I was just writing out things I was thankful for and you popped on the list and I wanted to tell you. Imagine how that conversation is gonna go. Um, it's a really simple process and we can easily overlook it, but gratitude is bigger than just a meal, just getting together once a year. But this is something that we can experience and God can use to leverage our perspective and get us through anything that we're going through. So let me pray for you and, uh, and uh, please let me know. I would love to know uh, during the week if you can message us just a couple things that you're thankful for. You can either put them in the comments here in this video or you can message us privately. Uh, I would love to, to just see what you're thankful for. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, would you please open our eyes to the beauty and wonder that's around us God, will you change our perspectives and use this discipline of gratitude to change our attitudes? Uh, but we need your help to do that. So right now we surrender uh, to you 
and ask that you would open our eyes so we could see the world as you see it. Please provide comfort to everyone that's hurting right now, going through real stuff. And God, we pray that uh, this week we will see you all over the place, in new places. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we love you. I mean that. If you're here, maybe it's your first time, we've been praying for you. We're glad that you're here. Um, and until we're together next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine down upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and may the Lord give you his peace. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.